This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the reproductive system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, I will allow two seconds of pause for each picture before starting to comment so that you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the gross anatomy of a male pelvis and a perineum. Name the nerve plexus indicated by the tip of the pointer, which nerves contribute to the parasympathetic component of this plexus. So first of all, let's orient ourselves. And here you can see some of the branches of the internal iliac artery, the anterior division and the posterior division of the uh, internal iliac artery. Uh, these are the roots of the sacral plexus and li they lie on pariformis muscle. And so the plexus that we are asked to identify, which is located in here at the tip of the pointer, is a small nerve plexus that is located medial to the sacral plexus. In fact, it is located in the fascia on the side of the rectum in the pararectal fossae. So there are two plexuses, one on each side, and this is the inferior hypogastric plexus. The plexus is a, an autonomic plexus uh, made of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers. The parasympathetic component of this plexus is contributed by branches from the sacral plexus, from S2, 3, and 4, and these constitute the sacral parasympathetic outflow. You will remember that in the parasympathetic nervous system, there is a cranial outflow, which is represented by four cranial nerves, including the vagus nerve, which um, distributes the parasympathetic innervation for the thorax and the, um, most of the abdomen, but the remaining part of the abdomen from the distal third of the transverse colon, descending sigmoid colon, and the viscera of the pelvis, they receive their parasympathetic innervation from S23 and 4 segments of the spinal cord. And these are called the nervi erigentis or the pelvic parasympathetic outflow or the pelvic splanchnic nerves. The branches from this plexus, the inferior hypogastric plexus, will be distributed to the viscera of the pelvis by accompanying the branches of the internal iliac artery. In this plastic model of a male pelvis and perineum sagittal section, name the veins 1 and 2. So uh, the vein 1, it is located on the dorsum of the penis. It is the deep dorsal vein of the penis that it is continuous below the pubic symphysis and it opens here or it drains into the venous plexus that is located in the pelvis around the prostate gland. So it drains into the prostatic venous plexus, deep dorsal vein of the penis located deep to the fascia of the penis and it is flanked on either side by the dorsal artery of the penis and the dorsal nerve of the penis. Number two is the superficial dorsal vein of the penis, which is located in the superficial fascia. It is not accompanied by arteries, and this is like a cutaneous um, superficial vein. So it drains into another superficial vein in the region, and that is the great saphenous vein. Regarding structures three and four, and the veins that drains them, structure three is the uh, testis and this is uh, drained by the testicular veins and the testicular veins on the, the the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein while the right testicular vein drains directly into the inferior vena cava so the testicular veins have take the blood for a long way up in order to drain into the abdomen and this reason for that is because the testis develops in the abdomen and then descends down into the scrotum dragging its blood supply and nerve supply with it and that's why the testicular veins they do not drain into local veins but they drain into veins in the abdomen regarding the prostate gland this is drained by a prostatic venous plexus surrounding the prostate 
and the prostatic venous plexus drains into the internal iliac vein. Now this is a sagittal section of a male pelvis and to be oriented this is the anterior and this is the posterior aspect. You can see that very clearly here number four is the pubic symphysis covered by cartilage and behind it is the urinary bladder. Note the folding of the mucosa of the contracted bladder. Here's the apex, base, and neck of the bladder. And behind the bladder is the seminal vesicle. And here below the neck of the bladder is the prostatic gland, although the section is not exactly in the midline, so it doesn't show the prostatic urethra, but this is the prostatic gland. The section is a little bit off the midline. Below, we can see the root of the penis in the urogenital triangle. Here is the crust and the bulb. Behind the penis is a fibromuscular structure here that is located just in front of the anal canal. This is the perineal body. Here you are asked to identify the structure A in which perineal pouch it lies. This is a sagittal section of a male pelvis and structure A is the bulb of the penis and it is located in the superficial perineal pouch. The superficial perineal pouch in both sexes it contains the root of the penis or the clitoris and covered by the muscles related to them. B identify the structure which organ lies at its base. So here again to be oriented this is the pubic symphysis and this is the bladder at the neck of the bladder, below the neck of the bladder, lies the prostate gland. This is the shape of the prostate gland. It has its apex below and its base above. It looks like a chestnut. And so the base of the gland lies opposite the neck of the bladder, while the apex of the gland lies opposite the urogenital diaphragm. The apex below, the base above. Identify the structure A, name the opening B through which structure A passes. So this is again a sagittal section of a male pelvis. You can see the urinary bladder in here. Here's the base of the urinary bladder and the neck of the urinary bladder located here. This is the anterior abdominal wall and the B is a deficiency in the anterior abdominal wall. That is the deep inguinal ring. You can notice here that the inferior epigastric vessels are just medial to it and arising from the ring is structure A that passes in the lateral wall of the pelvis then goes medially here you can see that the structure is going to distend so this is the vas A is the vas coming from the deep inguinal ring and um, then the vas or ductus deferens is going to be distended to form the ampulla of the vas and the ampulla will unite with the seminal vesicle which is located more laterally and they form the ejaculatory duct. Now identify the canal A, list two of its contents. Uh, this is a dissection of the perineum at the region of the ischioanal fossa and so here you can see the uh, anal canal and the anus is located in the midline. Um, more laterally in here is the ischial tuberosity. So this is the lateral wall of the ischioanal fossa where the obturator internus muscle lies and the fascia of our obturator internus will split to form a facial canal which is known as the pudendal canal or the pudendal canal of Alcock. It contains the pudendal nerve, a branch of the sacral plexus and internal pudendal vessels the artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery. The proximal part of the canal also contains the nerve of obturator internus muscle. Now the pudendal nerve, as it passes in the lateral wall of the ischioanal fossa, it gives branches that will travel medially across the fossa. You can see them here. And this is the inferior rectal nerve. It supplies levator ani muscle, which forms the medial wall of the fossa. And also it supplies the external anal sphincter. So B is the inferior rectal nerve. Here you are asked to identify structures A and B and name two ducts that open into B. Now structure A, if we follow structure A we will see that it comes from above 
going down into the pelvis, crossing the pelvic brim, and then passes forwards to open into the base of the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder, the base, and this is the superior surface, the apex of the urinary bladder, and this is the region of the neck of the urinary bladder. So this is the ureter, actually. You shouldn't confuse it with the vas that comes from the deep inguinal ring here. Now, structure B is uh, located within the prostate gland, prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra um, receives the multiple ducts of the prostatic glands, and these are located in the sinuses on either side of the urethral crest, which is located in the midline of the prostatic urethra. And at the top of the urethral crest opens the ejaculatory duct. So the ejaculatory duct is formed by the union of the uh, ampulla of the vas in here and the seminal vesicle. So two ducts that open into the prostatic urethra are the ejaculatory ducts and the ducts of the prostatic glands. Identify the muscle A and identify the muscle B at the tip of the pointer B specific. This is a section of a pelvis. Here is the anterior side showing the pubic symphysis. And this is the uh, superior ramus of the pubis is located here. And so this is the region of the obturator foramen and it is closed by a muscle in the lateral wall of the pelvis, which is the obturator internus muscle. And you can see that here it's covered by very thick fascia, and the fascia is thick enough to provide origin for another muscle, and the muscle here is levator ani muscle. Part of it arises from a tendinous arch in the obturator internus fascia and the vater ani muscle has several parts including the most anterior fibers here which arise from the pubis and these are called the pubococcygeus but the middle fibers here which arise from the tendinous arch in the obturator internus fascia is called the iliococcygeus so the muscle is the vater ani to be specific it is the iliococcygeus most posteriorly, these muscle fibers which lie on top of the sacrospinous ligament are called the ischiococcygeus or coccygeus. Which part of the urethra is located in the region bounded by the yellow lines? Name two layers of fascia represented by the yellow lines. Now, if we look at this region that is bounded by the yellow lines, we will see that on top of it is the prostate gland. The prostate gland is located within the pelvis and its apex lies on the urogenital diaphragm. Below the urogenital diaphragm, the region here contains the root of the penis. So this is the bulb of the penis. So the area here is the superficial perineal pouch and the region that is bounded by the two yellow lines is the deep perineal pouch. It is bounded by the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm above and the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm below. The inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm has a special name and this is called the perineal membrane. The part of the urethra that passes within the urogenital diaphragm is called the membranous urethra and as you can see that it is a continuation of the prostatic urethra and then it continues as the penile urethra the bulbar and penile urethra